and welcome. We've owned Harvey for a couple of months now, and if you subscribed or follow our channel, you know that we've just had 25 continuous days away in our RV. Both here and on Instagram, we've had many comments and requests to give an updated perspective of life inside the Dane Tree and see how the space works for us. The landscape has changed dramatically since our early vlog, and not only in the motorhome offerings, but with the availability, price, and waiting times. The Dane Tree has lost its price advantage, and there's been no updates to the basics. So dimensions, layouts, items like the larger fridge and the stove are still here, but due to component shortages, there's been slight revisions. Actually, the fresh water tank has been reduced from 110 down to 96 litres. The solar panel is now officially listed at 180 when it was constantly changing from 150, 170, 110. So what are our thoughts? Well, we're biased and we're still in love with the space, the atmosphere, the trim, the colours, the bench space, the light from the windows, you get the point. So let's start with the driving. This is something we couldn't cover on our earlier vlog as we bought Harvey without a test drive. But we find the engine and the transmission responsive, it's smooth and easy to drive, and being a diesel at a suitable power for confidence in overtaking on the hills. With the Daintree being an entry or a shorter model, it's easy to manoeuvre, the mirrors actually give really good uh, perspective, and the rear view camera up here is definitely needed. You do need to be a little bit patient with the DSG gearbox, as the gear indicator on the dash is a little bit slow. It's not super responsive, and you sometimes engage the lever multiple times before it selects the gear. The Renault factory GPS is a good size and needs familiarization. It's a bit slow on the move. Sometimes you reach an intersection before it tells you you have. So it does require a yearly subscription um, of about 90 pounds, but it's based out of Europe. So we have the latest update, but it hasn't been especially accurate, especially in the rural areas in South Australia. You're probably better served by buying a proper GPS or just using your phone maps. Driving confidently requires accurate tire pressure. We found tires seem to look like they're always underinflated, but when you check them, they're fine. So we've got more confidence in our TPMS system. Travels through rough and B roads have led us to slightly reduce the tire pressure from 70 down to 63 to give a smoother ride. It results in less crashes and rattles from the habitat, which is good for everyone. Moving into the habitat and starting here in the middle in the dinette, for two, there's plenty of space with windows on each side. You have plenty of light and ventilation with views and power and USBs down here for your needs. The table's a great size and it has a good range of movement. Our only negative comment would be that it would benefit from maybe having a split lower cushion so you can access the storage underneath as the doors for the storage is split. The access to the Luton is still great and it's better than the Jayco, but depending on how you stack it and store your items, you need to be wary on the sides of the gap between this edge of the bed and the Luton Peak. We've gone through different variations here in tubs and storage items trying to find the best option for us. But it's also great to mention that you can stretch out and recline in the swivel seats. So here we do this quite often. We have the seats turned around and recline. You can actually watch the TV. It actually gives you the best option, doesn't it, Bubby? To actually enjoy the space in the hub. Moving on to the bed, we've had lots of questions about its arrangement. Yes, it's a compromise because of the east-west layout and some someone will have to climb over the, the other person to get in and out and go to the toilet. You just need to be wary of that. When lowering and setting up the bed in a previous video, you'll notice that we were shown only to keep one of these headrests and use it along as a backrest. But we've actually discovered you need both. Because if you're like us and you like to sit up in bed and you reading a book or having a cup of tea, you'll find that if you don't use the two cushions when this is up, being as it's paper and it's quite delicate, you, will, you may damage it. We actually felt we were damaging it. We have solar sunshades for the windscreen, so we don't bother with sleeping with the curtains drawn. Another personal choice we made was we swapped out the standard foam mattress for an inner spring mattress for more support. It's worth mentioning that the Jayco has an inner spring mattress as standard, but the Jayco bed actually sits higher and you need a ladder to actually climb up to get into it. So let's move on to the kitchen. Moving back here into the kitchen, the layout is great. The bench space is real good with the stove closed, but it gets reduced when you open this up and it takes some planning. I find the rate on the gas hob is a little slow, so cooking can take a little bit longer than you may be used to, but that's where the barbecue really helps. The fridge is fantastic and the general storage is still good and we've actually divided most of our cupboards up now to give us extra shelving. These are not standard. 
So we've done that ourselves. It gives us more than double the normal space you normally get. You still have your USB, but we've also discovered that this power point over the sink is a little bit useless as the sink is right here. So we've chosen to extend that and I'll just show you. So we now have this extension here so we can make cup of teas and put any powered use on this side well away from that water. Now when you're driving, you come across a series of rattles and squeaks, you don't know where they are. But one of the first noises we got was from this grill. So what we've realised is you have to actually wrap the grill here in a tea towel, otherwise you really do get a lot of rattles. Now also visual checks are probably not enough we've discovered in the Dane Tree, as the latches do um, look like they're shut and sometimes they don't. So we've actually started to give them a little bit of a push just to make sure. So it's nothing worse than driving down that freeway and you hit a expansion joint or a bump in the road and a drawer comes flying open. So it's just something that I think you get grown used to as we've been driving along. Now the standard aircon is a godsend, especially in the warmer months. But with the bed fully raised, it hinders a good airflow as it flows this way. So we find that the mattress ends up being, and the sheets end up being super cold, while the dinette here stays warm. In our opinion, it needs to be turned 90 degrees this way, or it should actually be moved further back. Lighting is LED. It's great for dim days, but of a night time when you're relaxing, it can be just a tad bright. So you need to play around a little bit. Only the down lights here can be dimmed and the rest are all solid. So if you're in bed and you have to have the down lights off, so a solution needs to be found. We actually discovered that we turn on the range hood lights. That works for us. It may not work for everybody, but with the USB and the power here, you could easily put in a night light or something like that. Because the last thing you want to do is when you're in bed and you're relaxing is actually get out of bed to get to the light switch to turn all your lights off. It is a personal choice and it's our choice. Moving to the rear, it's fantastic to have a full bathroom included in the space compared to the good old shower toilet combo, but again here you'll find compromises. We find the shower is great, it's bright, it has good ventilation, it's not spacious but for the limited space available it's a good size. The toilet and the vanity are welcomed but they're a little tight. When you shut the door you find it's fine for using the toilet but it's a little bit tight after you get out of the shower and you want to dry yourself. So we've started drying ourselves with the door open, obviously with the blind shut. So moving here to the outside, the storage areas are okay, but again, it needs planning and organizing to utilize them properly. Out here in this first storage area, we've added a divider to protect the batteries on this side. And the awning poles that used to live here have now been relocated into wasted space above the freshwater tank. We now use a mat and we've learned to get better stability out of the rollout awning. You need to secure the legs to the ground. We've also recently bought some tie downs and a privacy screen. And we also use the outdoor shower for washing Ollie. And as well, you could add a little table and a tub and do your laundry out here. And we've learned that once you're set up, if you want to explore the area, you need the ability to move around. So now after our first round of holidays, we've added the bike rack. So now once you're set up, and if we feel like we need to explore, off come the bikes and away we go. Well, since we made that video some six months ago about the towing capabilities of the Dane Tree, a lot has changed in the landscape now that owners are receiving their models and they're having the availability to go and get these things looked at. So there is a company in Queensland that's gone down the, the bespoke path and made a jig. So there's a handful of people who've now had tow bars installed on the Dane Tree. So it can be done. Um, I'll leave the link down below regarding the company that's doing it, uh, but you will have to bear in mind that at the moment it's probably still a bit pricey, but the price will come down with the more people that actually order one. So again, just letting you know that it has changed, you can get a tow bar on the Daintree. So coming around here, you have a toilet cassette in the Daintree. We don't have a black water pipe, which is actually quite good. You only have the cassette. So they're quite simple. So there's a little lever down here and you pull these out like so. And they also slide back in again. The one thing you have to remember with these cassettes is when you're emptying them, these little things are quite easy to be lost or to <laughs> lose down the dump site. So be careful to place it far enough away that you're not gonna lose them. And to make sure they're really tight when you put it back, otherwise you could end up with a nasty surprise next time you open the door. 
Apparently some of our members have added a second three kilo gas tank in here, but we've added the gas gauge and across the hot water, the barbecue, the fridge and cooking, we're amazed as to how little gas we actually use. So here on top of the fresh water tank, we installed these clips to hold the awning poles. So it actually makes them far more convenient than just rattling around in the previous tub. Well, that's our update on living with the Dane tree. Uh, hopefully you got some great information out of that. A lot has changed in the 12 months since we made that first video and put down our deposit. And now that we have the Dane tree, we've been able to live with it and give you a better idea of what it's like if you purchase one of these motorhomes. If you liked this sort of content, please don't forget to subscribe, give us a like and tell your friends. Anyway, hope to see you soon with the RV Travelling Husbands. It just goes into sleep mode. I... Let Daddy come past you can sit on that corner. The access to the... No, you stay. The access to the Luton is still great. Hang on. Is it not starting? See how it's just like... We're amazed as to how, ga how much little gas we actually use. I stuffed that up. Should I just redo it? Take two. Nah, no, stop. Then a little.